You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Well, my lovely friends, in case you don't know or are just joining me for the first time, I am Kathleen McGivern and I am both a founder and creator of All Things Ms. Artastic. I am a one-woman show that creates everything from the art lessons and resources to my own websites, including MsArtastic.com, which is my blog, and the Artastic Collective, which is my membership site where you receive bundles of fully prepped art lessons each month that you can use immediately in your classroom. I also have my resources available in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic, and you can find it by searching Ms. Artastic on TPT. I also run this podcast and have a YouTube channel which produces new episodes each week. I am dedicated to you, Artastic Nation. I want to ensure that I can help you be productive, efficient, and fully planned, which will hopefully alleviate some of that art teaching stress as I help you through your year. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about encouraging students to be creative. First, I'm going to share with you some ideas of how to fuel your creativity, which you can write down notes for, then share in your own classroom to your students so they can fuel their creativity. And second, I'll talk about some finish the picture and creativity challenge ideas. And these are all ideas that you can use um, or teach in your own classroom that can help encourage your students to be creative. Here are my tips, ideas, and inspiration for learning how to fuel your creativity, whether you create art, teach art to kids, write stories or poems, are a blogger, a teacherpreneur, make YouTube videos, or create podcasts. Ideas can be hard to come by when you have creativity block or writer's block. And here are my tips for how to fuel your creativity and get your deepest, most authentic and genuine ideas. First, schedule a time to be creative. Creativity can't happen if you don't allow time for it to occur. Sometimes we have intentions on painting this month or writing a blog post this week, but before you know it, the month or week has passed and you made nothing happen. It is important for your own success that you schedule a specific date and time when you're going to block out the rest of the world, including your TV, and phone. Hide the phone. It is a time suck. Music is, of course, allowed. In my life, I schedule my own business and my free creative times in my studio on my digital calendar. I use my OneDrive calendar, but you can also use your Google Calendar or phone calendar app. You can also purchase a calendar or or notebook calendar or agenda for the year where you can pencil in all your adventures and block out where you will dedicate yourself to being creative in your office, lounge, studio, or wherever your creative experiences occur. Second, carry a pen and paper. Ideas can come at any time and anywhere, and if you don't record them right away, they will be gone in the wind, floating carefully like a butterfly. Um, So please make sure that you find something to record the ideas with, and that could very well be your phone using like a Google Keep Post-it, for example. Prepare yourself for creative successes by always being prepared to capture ideas the moment your brain spits them out of the chaos and mutterings that are swirling around your head. Get inspired by others. One way I get inspired to create content, art, or crafts is by taking an hour to three hour long emerge sessions. During this time, I focus all my listening and watching to others in my field that can inspire me. This means that you are looking at blog posts, going to art galleries, watching YouTube videos, diving through Pinterest or Instagram, very specifically though, right? You're targeting certain hashtags or certain artists, that kind of thing. Reading magazines, maybe it's juxtaposed, I don't know. Watching documentaries or listening to podcasts that are on a very specific topic. Drink your coffee or your tea or water, whatevs, while you listen. As you are focusing, jot down ideas in your notebook or make quick sketches in your sketchbook. Get your brain fired up. 
Fuel it with a deep emerge session and go on a deep one specific topic, right? Go deep on one topic, just one. The key to this creativity hack is that you need to set a timer. If you're doing a Pinterest and blog session, an hour might be good, but not five hours on Pinterest. I know you're going to get distracted in that time and you're going to start looking at some other crafting or whatever. I know what it's like to go on Pinterest. I have gone down the black rabbit hole of time stuck in my freedom into, oh my gosh, it's already bedtime. I just wasted five hours on Pinterest. Okay, so if you're diving through books and podcasts and documentaries or other video content, you might want to book in more than an hour because that is a very different thing. Um, I would say three hours at the max for your entire, uh, for that kind of session. Or you will go down a black hole of endless time wasting and then you will have accomplished nothing. So in, in total, you don't want to go past that three hour mark. You will have wasted time not being productive on the actual making, right? At some point, the whole idea is to make. So the trick here is to feed the fuel of your focus topic. Then when that alarm goes off, get to work. Start creating your content, your blog post, your art, your book, whatever it is, work while your brain is fired up and fueled and your creativity is now hopefully energized. Okay, that is the timing is very key. You need to make sure that after that emerge session, you also have that time booked in for creating. Fuel your creativity with good food and antioxidants. Your creativity can't exist without your brain and body. It is important to ensure that you're fueling your body and brain for success with important vitamins and minerals. So have your veggies, grains, nuts, and vitamins and minerals every day. And protein, uh, no matter what kind of protein that you go for, um, whether it's animal or not. I myself don't eat living creatures. But anyways, you do you. Uh, that's what's important. Just make sure that you're getting a balanced diet. Ensure that you're drinking a lot of water to keep your body hydrated and to make sure the toxins and wastes are flushed out. Make sure that you eat clean and limit the amount of processed food you eat. Avoid plastics. Whole foods are the way to go for healthy eating that will, that will fuel your body and mind. You need your body and brain to live and work at its fullest potential and it cannot do that if what you put into your body can't sustain it. So remember there is a also a dark side of creativity. Sometimes we can go so deep and if we don't consume things that are good for us and instead choose unhealthy alternatives or use too much of other substances, then that dark side can very well overwhelm us. So searching through your creativity means that you are connecting with yourself on a deep level and make sure you do it in a healthy way. Hey lovely friend, I just want to pause this episode to let you know about my YouTube channel. In my YouTube channel, Ms. Artastic, I create art lessons for kids. They include full art projects that are themed around the elements of art and principles of design, but also just fun drawing tutorials that kids love to draw with. I create videos with art education in mind and I'm always mindful to use art vocabulary, making my videos both friendly for home and the classroom. Search Ms. Artastic on YouTube or find the link in my blog, misartastic.com. Be sure to subscribe. Now, back to the episode. Go outside your comfort zone. Try a new medium, explore new ideas, or an experiment with a new style to try and force, your side, force yourself pardon me, outside your comfort zone. You will need to learn new things and supercharge your creativity. You can't learn and grow by sticking to what you know. Don't be afraid. Just do it. I'm starting up a podcast, uh, but I'm terrified of talking and especially afraid of interviewing and talking to actual humans. However, that doesn't mean I didn't do it, okay? So because this made me terrified, I decided to pursue it and started hosting a podcast. That terrified feeling I was having 
that anxiety and that feeling like I was going to vomit. That was the first hint as to what I should explore next. And now I feel a lot more comfortable, right? Because I got over my fear. So the next time you feel uncomfortable, terrified, or afraid, do that thing. That is a that is that is an your body telling you, oh my gosh, hey, that's an opportunity for growth, right? You don't know how to do that. It's scary. Maybe we should learn it and it will become less scary, and then you'll have a new tool in your tool belt. Okay? So try that new blog post style, new craft, new art medium, make a podcast, sing a song and dance, do whatever it is to make you get outside your comfort zone to fuel your creativity with new possibilities. Next, brainstorm like a hurricane. Let your ideas flow freely without limit. We are always self-doubting, self-limiting, or self-editing. This is done without even giving true thought to it. And to overcome this instinct, you need to brainstorm like a hurricane and record all your ideas down without any limit or putting judgment on them. So ideas can be recorded in a number of ways. You can brainstorm, so you can create a mind map of all the ideas that come and record them on paper. You can audio record, so for some people it's easier to talk out your ideas as they come. Use your favorite device to voice record your ideas and you can then listen to them at any time. And of course there are apps for that. Stream of consciousness writing, so you can write down or draw. Um, any thought or word that comes into your mind as it comes without any judgment. Simply record everything either through words or pictures and that way you can sift through and evaluate your thoughts later. You could journal. So write a journal with all the thoughts and ideas that come to your mind. As well you can sketchbook. So draw any visuals that you render in your mind as quick in, in, as, in your mind as quick with few second sketches. Fill the page without limits and then glean from it later. Next, you can go on a walk to get ideas. So a lot of the time when I'm walking, my ideas suddenly appear. So go on a walk, get outside and wake up your body and mind with movement and fresh air. You will be able to focus on the moment and remove distractions. Don't look at your phone. Simply leave your home and start walking. The ideas won't come right away, but as you move and live in the moment and breathe the fresh air, the ideas will flow and come to you, and they might even hit you like a runaway train. Be prepared for this with your voice recorder or notepad. Next is talk, creativity challenge, and challenges and finish the picture activities that can help encourage your students to be creative. I love to create worksheets that have the same prompt, that have the same prompt or part of picture repeated across the paper. You can draw a series of X's or squares or circles or other shapes in a grid on a paper and for each of them the students have to use that symbol as a starting point and then turn each one into something. You can challenge them to think outside the box this way. For older students, encourage them to draw in detail and to add color or value to their work. You can also have finish the picture resources. Um, I have created a series of finish the picture, which is my term that I use for my series or line of work. Um, these are my finish the pictures worksheets. Um, even one, I have even ones that come in seasonal or holiday themes with, and you can use these with students. Um, they themselves are given a part of a picture on the worksheet and it's their job to use their creativity and imagination to complete the image. They can even complete it in unexpected ways. I love to leave the medium open-ended for students to allow them the opportunity to have choice and to experiment with. These are also great addition for subtubs if you're going to be away. It doesn't require a lot of direction but is allowing students to be very creative at the same time. And of course, they are very engaging and can be very fun and silly. So after all, how do we get to know mediums if we don't have the opportunity to play with it? So encourage and allow choice and the opportunity to experiment. You can find both my creativity challenges and finish the picture resources in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Simply search Mizertastic on TPT or find the link in my blog. And these will, of course, be available also with your Artastic Collective membership in the classroom. You can also give unusual 
sketchbook prompts as a means to encourage your students to be creative and imaginative. After all, creating art is all about being a creative thinker, someone who is experimenting, exploring their imagination in the vast land in which impossibilities exist. I love giving prompts that are completely random, such as draw a banana in space or draw the attack of the giant hamburger. Make it fun and random. Try to include student interests to really grasp their attention and get them excited about the opportunity for creative thinking. You can find my sketchbook prompts or task cards that are already pre-made for you in the sketchbook section of both my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic, and the Artastic Collective with your membership in the sketchbook section. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast for more art resources. Find them in my TPT store, Ms. Artastic, or find free drawing tutorials on my YouTube channel, Ms. Artastic. Simply search Ms. Artastic anywhere on the internet and you shall find me. As well, I'm always looking for some art teachers who would like to pop on as guests uh, for an interview. If you are willing to share a very fun or successful art project that you do in your classroom, or maybe a really awesome art teacher hack that you do, um, please uh, email me, or you can find my contact form on my blog, MsArtastic.com. I'm Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing off.